Hi Gaon. My name is Dr. Torbjörn Westerlund uh, and this channel is focused on Australian Aboriginal languages. Uh, now this is the third video in a series about this phenomenon in Australian Aboriginal languages. Uh, alienable and inalienable possession. Uh, and if you haven't seen the first two videos, I recommend you start with the first one. So for this video, I have looked at the bigger picture. What is the situation like in Australia as a whole when it comes to expression of possession? Uh, and I have been reading Dixon. That would be Professor R. M. W. Dixon, who probably is the most important person within Australianist linguistics during the second half of the 20th century. And as of the making of this video, he is still alive. So Dixon has read much of what has been written about Australian languages. Uh, and he concludes that in Pamanyungan languages you generally find two different genitive constructions. Uh, there is one that expresses part-whole relationships uh, and where adposition is used. This is a nice word for uh, simply placing two words next to each other. In this case, of course, the part and the whole. Uh, and for all other functions that genitive constructions are used, uh, you find a, a construction where there is genitive marking. So we have been describing this as alienable and inalienable uh, possession. Uh, by the way, I should mention that Dixon seems to be the only one that does not uh, recognize Pamanyungan as a language family. Uh, I do realize, of course, that it's hard to establish conclusively that Pamanyungan is a language family. Uh, with historical linguistic methods uh, due to the fact that we have next to no information at all uh, about uh, Australian languages prior to the 1800s. Nevertheless, it is the reasonable assumption to make, considering that, uh, the similarities that we see in Pamanyungan languages all over the continent. So I would say that Dixon is the odd one out here. Uh, anyway, uh, these are examples from the Wargamai language of northeastern Queensland. Uh, interesting to note here is that while uh, Dixon has used other transcription conventions than those employed when we transcribe languages of Western Australia. Uh, we find here the same Ngaja as in Ngara at the opposite end of the continent. Uh, and yes, Australia is a continent, it is not an island. There are thousands of kilometers between uh, Wargamai Ngaja and Ngara Ngadja. And both of them mean first person singular ergative. So I in transitive clauses. So that is interesting. Uh, Wargamai is now uh, an extinct language. In 1981 there were three speakers left uh, and they have since died. Uh, the language that was traditionally Wargamai's neighboring language uh, and which is also closely related, Jirbal, uh, is still alive. 
but the number of speakers uh, has been falling decade by decade since the 1970s and in the 2016 uh, uh, census there were eight speakers left of Jirbal. So uh, it might go extinct soon too, which of course is very uh, unfortunate. Anyway, there are Pamanyonga languages with more than two genitive constructions and Jirbal uh, happens to be one of them. First, you see here that we have a, a genitive construction with the same suffix mo as in closely related wargamai. Uh, and these two examples here concern the father's boomerang, wangal. So uh, Dixon calls this the simple genitive construction. So what is the difference between the simple genitive and the general genitive? Well, this is something that is unique for this language, by the way. Uh, and it implies that while the father does indeed own the boomerang, he doesn't have it right now. He may have misplaced it somewhere or he may have lent it to someone else. Also, this construction can be used uh, when talking about uh, one's dead father uh, and the boomerang that he had when he was uh, alive. Yes, so two uh, Pamanyungan languages. Let's also look at two non Pamanyungan languages. Uh, the non Pamanyungan languages uh, being spoken in what is called Australia's top end. That would be the northernmost part. You see, the Pamanyungan languages are spread out over most of the continent, but in the top end, we find lots of small languages that can be very different from each other and that seem to belong to a number of small language families. Uh, and how this situation has come about is unknown uh, to us today. We can conclude uh, that this situation has existed for quite some time though, because you see, although these languages can be very different, they do have certain, certain things in common. Uh, one of them being a preference for prefixes. Uh, but let's start with Kurgoni, which is an Arnhem land language. Uh, the languages of Arnhem land are considered to be related to each other, to constitute a group. Uh, and there are different opinions about whether these languages are related to Pamanyungan or not. Uh, anyway, in some Australian languages, and Kurgoni being one of them, uh, a pronoun is compulsory in expressions of alienable possession, uh, like here. You may also include a noun, or a common noun or a name, for the one that is the owner, but it is the pronoun that's compulsory. So here we get John Hart, his car. Note that we get mutika here. In Ngara, mutuka. Obviously, that is what they call cars in Australia early on. Uh, and then, last but not least, we have the Ngarinyin language which is known by different names, as you can see. Uh, it is a language of northernmost Western Australia, uh, and it belongs to the Wururan uh, language family. Uh, and they have lots of prefixes. 
Uh, and it so happens that the languages, languages of the world uh, that make most use of prefixes are the languages of the top end in Australia and the Bantu languages in Africa, uh, which are spoken south of the Saharan Desert. So here you can see that we have the word for forehead. Uh, and to indicate whose forehead you are talking about, uh, you use prefixes. Uh, now the Gurgoni language had 46 speakers in the 2016 census, uh, and all of them were trilingual. Uh, so they all spoke three of the Arnhem land languages. Uh, this language had 38 speakers in the 2016 census. This is a sad fact. Many Australian Aboriginal languages have disappeared uh, and many more of those that are still spoken will disappear. This is very unfortunate, but we must work hard uh, and uh, collect as much information and material in these languages as possible uh, before they disappear, obviously, so that knowledge about these languages will survive for all that are interested. This is all for today. See you later.